wonder hussy here in the beautiful mountains. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't go very far because I'm still stuck in Death Valley waiting on some car repairs. My shocks are leaking. I can't really go anywhere until I get them fixed. Certainly can't go off-roading, but it's like a hundred and... Oh gosh, I think it was supposed to be 173.5 today in Death Valley, and I just couldn't take it anymore. I had to get away. Lucky for me, there happens to be a fantastic 10,000 foot high mountain range just outside Las Vegas. And even more lucky, the road to get up here is paved the whole way, so I don't have to worry about stressing out my leaky shocks on some bumpy gravel road. No sir, there's a nice paved highway all the way up almost to the top of this mountain range. I parked here at the North Loop Trailhead at 8,500 feet. It's a really balmy mm, 78 degrees up here. That's fully 30 degrees cooler than it was down in Vegas. Anyway, I'm gonna leave my rig parked here at the trailhead and I'm gonna hike up to a really cool old tree. That's right, you might have heard of the famous bristlecone pine trees. There's a whole forest of them up in the White Mountains on the California-Nevada border over off US 395. And I made a video up there once. I think that's where the oldest tree ever found is. But over here in these spring mountains, just outside Las Vegas, there's another bristlecone pine tree forest. And this one has some pretty cool old trees too, including I think the oldest tree in Nevada. Uh, okay, it's not marked on the map. Maybe they don't want people to know exactly where it is. I'm not sure about that though. There's plenty of information available online telling you all about how to hike to this tree. I've been to it a bunch of times when I lived in Vegas. I used to hike up here relatively often because it's a really, it's a fantastic old tree, but it's an amazing hike. I mean, this is so exceptional to be up here in this pine forest at 8,500 feet with all these gorgeous little wildflowers blooming just outside Las Vegas. It's one of the cool things about the basin and range landscape. There's all these low, hot basins right next to these high, cool ranges. So in the summertime, <laughs> I know where I want to be. Anyway, I just started the hike. It's about noon. Uh, the trailhead where I parked is at around 8,500 feet. And this tree that I'm hiking to is almost at 10,000 feet. So I'm going to gain about 1,500 feet of elevation in just under three miles. It's a pretty steep hike. I'll probably be huffing and puffing, but I think we can do it. Ah, see this sign? Mount Charleston Wilderness in the Humboldt Toyabe National Forest. Mount Charleston is the highest peak in this mountain range. It's about, oh gosh, I want to say it's just under 12,000 feet high. It's pretty high up there. And I've done that hike. Been there, done it, made a video. It's an awesome hike, uh, partly because you come upon this old plane crash. There's an old CIA plane that crashed up on Mount Charleston back in the I think 1950s. So you get to check that out and then you get to go to the top and there's a little log book you can write your name in. It's a cool hike, but it doesn't have the oldest tree in Nevada on it. Like this trail we're hiking today. Oh my gosh, look at these beautiful little wildflowers blossoming all along the sides of the trail. Just beautiful. That's what makes these spring mountains so exceptional. They actually call them sky islands. I love that term, sky islands, because they're this tall, 10,000 foot tall mountain range in the middle of a relatively flat desert basin. Remember, basin and range. Well, out of all the basins and all the ranges in Nevada, I think this is one of the most dramatic differences. Mount Charleston has one of the best prominences of any mountain in the country or maybe even the world. I don't remember where it ranks, but Prominence just means how high a peak is relative to the surrounding landscape and how far you can see in every direction. And you can see a long way from the top of Mount Charleston because everything is so flat all around it. And that's why they call these mountains sky islands because they're basically islands of forest in the sky surrounded by baking desert. I just think that's such a cool Almost sounds like something out of The Hobbit or something. The sky islands of the Mojave Desert. Those who are bold enough to brave the sky islands shall be rewarded with the magical sight of an ancient 
tree. Ooh, I'm really huffing and puffing with this elevation. I better shut my trap and get hiking. Okay, looks like we're finally coming up above the tree line and into the bristle cone zone. No more of these lush green pine forests. Here's where we enter into the Tolkien-esque landscape of twisted, gnarled, ancient creatures. And look at this tree. Just standing there naked as the day it was born without any shame whatsoever. I feel a real kinship with that tree. <laughs> Actually, speaking of being naked, I did hike up here a few times when I worked as a nude model. I worked as an artistic nude model for many years when I lived in Vegas. And I always thought it'd be cool to do art nudes in these crazy twisted trees. You know what I mean? You could climb into them and get into all kinds of interesting contorted shapes. Uh, the only problem is that this bristlecone pine forest is at, oh gosh, we're probably at least 9,000 feet now. And that's a tough hike for most of the photographers that I used to work with. Most of the guys who hired me were, let's just say on the older side. And I did go up here three times with three different photographers and got some really amazing photos. I'll have to put my magic bikini on to show them to you on YouTube, but I thought they came out pretty good. However, all three times I came up here, I thought that all three of the photographers were literally going to die on me as we were hiking up here. Cause that's a steep trail. I know I was huffing and puffing and my heart was going, while well, these other guys, oh, it was dicey, but yeah, look at this crazy landscape. I mean, you can see the dead, twisty trees laying all over the ground here, but then you can also see these beautiful wildflowers. I mean, look at these bright yellow and orange flowers all over this kind of dull colored scree on the ground. It's really magical. I think this is more magical than anything you could ever experience down on the Vegas Strip. But maybe that's just me. I don't know their look. These little flowers, well, first of all, they almost look like the, they're made out of crepe paper. They're kind of crinkly looking and they're growing right out of this. There's a tiny bit of dirt in these rocks and that's enough for these little flowers to get a toehold and start blooming. Ah, uh, nature therapy. There really is something to it, you know? I've been pretty depressed the last couple weeks. I've been stuck in Death Valley waiting for these dang shocks for my car. And it got really bad last night. I thought, I, I gotta at least get a change of scenery. And I'm really glad I came up here because this is the best mood elevator ever. I mean, gosh, the flowers are beautiful, but dang, these trees, I think are just so amazing the way their branches are all gnarled and twisted from the wind. I mean, I'm guessing that's why this tree looks like that, like it was being pushed this way. That must be the direction of the prevailing winds. Cause you can see there's not even any pine needles on this side. It's like they all got blown off going this way. And then look at this tree. This is one of my all time favorite trees up here. Uh, I recognize it very well. Uh, pretty sure I climbed up in that tree naked for one of my photo shoots. Just a gorgeous tree. I mean, dead as a doornail, but maybe all the more strikingly beautiful because of that, you know, I think there's a lot to be said for this dead, naked tree. Golly, and then look at the weird way the pine needles grow on these things and the pine cones. I don't know if this one here is a bristle cone pine, but these needles, it looks like a bottle brush that you use to clean out a bottle. Mmm, and it smells amazing. Like for the 157th time, I'll say, I wish this was smell-o-vision so you could smell how fresh the air is up here. I mean. Well, you can even see, this is actually a cool spot to show you. Way down there in the distance, you can see the blazing, baking hot desert floor. That's probably about mm, 2,000, 2,200 feet elevation. And then zoop, up there, you can see there's still patches of snow. <laughs> How about that? That's probably up around mm, 11,000 feet. It's a land of extremes. Look at this, there's even moss growing on these rocks. 
How about that? Oh my gosh, it's so soft. Uh, soft and nubbly. Feels amazing. I wish this was touch vision so you could feel this moss. Wow, and look at the size of this ginormous fallen tree. I mean, this thing was a beast. No telling how old this tree was. And some lightning strike took it down. I mean, but again, look at how cool the whorls, the twists and turns in these branches are. It's just gorgeous. And believe it or not, we're not even anywhere near the oldest tree in Nevada yet. This is just the beginning of the bristlecone forest. Oh, we still got a ways to go. Guess I better hoof it. Oh, wow, look. Patch of snow. I'm not surprised. Altimeter says we're at like 9,800 feet. Oh, no wonder I'm so out of breath. Oh my gosh, wow, there's still quite a bit of snow up here. Which again, I'm not surprised because of the elevation. And we also had a really weird rainy spring and winter this year. It probably snowed up here as recently as maybe two months ago. That reminds me of another time I was hiking up here and got lost in a blizzard on April 1st. I'm not kidding. And it was no April Fool's Day joke. I came up here hiking with my girlfriend Gina, who lives in Arkansas, but she was out here for a trade show or something and she wanted to go hiking. So I said, okay, let's hike to the oldest tree in Nevada. We got stuck in this blizzard. I'm not kidding, all this was covered in snow. And so we got kind of turned around because the trail was covered in snow. We couldn't see which way to go. We blundered around in the snow for hours and it actually got a little dicey there for a minute, but we obviously made it back down. And the funny thing was, after being stuck up in a blizzard at the top of the mountain, by the time we got back down to Vegas, well, it was warm enough to sit in the sun and have a beer. Okay, here it is. The oldest tree in Nevada. Okay, they call it the rain tree, and they estimate it to be about 3,000 years old. Now, if you've ever been up to the Bristlecone Forest in the White Mountains and read about those trees up there, well, Methuselah, the oldest tree in the world, is like 5,000 years old, I think. So you're probably thinking, well, how can this be the oldest tree in Nevada if it's only 3,000 years old? Huh? Methuselah is in California, just over the state line. Gotta zoom out so you can get like the full majesty of this thing. I mean, not only is this a very tall tree, it's also huge. I mean, the trunk, it's almost like it's more than one trunk. You know, it's like all these different trunks sort of gnarled and twisted together. Or I don't know, maybe they all sort of grew out of the same base. Uh, unfortunately, I was reading online, they don't even really want you to stand under it for too long. I know. I mean, they ask you to not camp under it and to not have fires in the area because they don't want anybody to, you know, accidentally burn it down. But they even don't want you standing under it for too long because you'll compress the dirt and it'll damage the root system. So let's run up the side of the mountain here. Maybe I can just sit right here on this log and admire it from a safe distance. Uh. You know what I mean? Like, I do, I get it, I respect this tree. This tree is 3,000 years old. This tree has been alive since like 1000 BC. You know, like the days of, wasn't that like the days of ancient Rome or ancient Greece or the ancient Egyptians? I mean, this tree was around for a thousand years when Jesus Christ was born. How about that? So I definitely afford this tree a great measure of respect and I don't wanna, <laughs> mess up its root system. So all right, I'll stay over here and look at it from a distance. Just kind of seems like they take all the fun out of stuff these days. You know what I mean? Actually, I'll take my backpack off. My backpack probably weighs another at least five pounds because I want to go back up to the tree one more time. Just real quick. I want to look at the bark up close. I mean, look how, I mean, oh my gosh, I got to start at the bottom. Look at these twisty, long, warped, gnarled roots that come up into the base of this tree. And then they just grow into this crazy psychedelic, looks like snake skin mixed with some kind of weird stripey smooth, I don't know what kind of skin, all the way up to the top. It's just like the textures are amazing. And no, I'm not on any kind of drugs or alcohol. I'm just high on life, man. Again, if this was texture vision, Oh gosh, you're probably not even supposed to touch the dang tree. Listen to the birds too here. Oh, so peaceful up here. You'd never know you're only like a, 
I don't know, 45 minute drive from the hustle and bustle of the insanity of the Vegas Strip. And that actually reminds me of something else cool on this hike that I want to show you. Unfortunately, we already passed it. So I'm going to have to backtrack. I'm going to have to say goodbye to the beautiful, majestic, ancient rain tree. Before we head back down and I show you that other thing that we already passed, well, it says here that we can go to Mummy Springs this way. And I think I read online that it's a really short detour. So with a name like Mummy Springs, I feel like we can't just hike up here and not go check it out. Let's go see what Mummy Spring is all about. Sounds like the name of a Hardy Boys mystery, yeah? Like the secret of Mummy Springs. When Joe and Bob Hardy drank the water from Mummy Springs against the advice of their camp counselor, they couldn't believe what happened to their consciousness. They were in another dimension. Ugh, we should be so lucky. Wow, you can definitely tell we're getting close to a spring because look how electric green these trees down here are. I guess those are aspens. Oh, I can hear water. We must be getting close. <gasps> wow, look at this beautiful waterfall. Crystal clear, ice cold snow melt. Probably coming from right at the top of Mount Charleston. And look, there's an old bristlecone pine. Sort of like keeping watch over Mummy Springs. It's like the guardian of Mummy Springs. Why didn't you stop them hardy boys from drinking the water? Look at how beautiful crystal clear this water is. I bet it's real cold. Let's see. Woo -wee. <laughs> that is refreshing here. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Let's put our hand in the waterfall. Woo, I can feel the water spraying on me from here. It feels pretty good to be honest. I worked up quite a sweat hiking up that trail. Woo -ha! Woo -ha! Wow. This is unreal. I got to give you guys a 360 pano of what I'm looking at here. Okay, so I'm standing at the base of this beautiful waterfall, Mummy Spring, and you can see there's more water coming down the rocks over there. And then you can see there's a big old patch of snow that still hasn't melted there. And then you can see off in the distance, the blazing hot desert floor below, these beautiful green aspen trees, the side of this amazing mountain I'm on, and that guardian bristle cone pine watching over it all. Wow, what a place to be alive. Oh, okay, before we leave Mummy Spring, here's one last look at how beautiful and pure and clean this water is coming down into this little creek, running on down the mountain, where unfortunately I found this dang water ball that some ninny left up here. Uh -huh, somebody was probably trying to collect some crystal clear Mummy Springs water for themselves. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pour it out and take the bottle back down with me and dispose of it properly. It's the least I can do. Okay, now let's go check out this last thing I wanna show you on this beautiful hike. And it is a doozy. Okay, wave goodbye to Rain Tree, disappearing in the background behind us. And now that I think about it, I can't remember if the rain tree is the oldest tree in Nevada or the oldest living thing in Nevada. Although, I guess there's older things in Nevada. Like how about them cocktail waitresses at Caesar's Palace? <laughs> Just kidding, that was like a super cheap shot low blow. They call those waitresses at Caesar's Palace cocktail saurus because it's a union job and so these waitresses that started working at Caesars back when it first opened in 1966. Well, they see no reason to quit their jobs. You know, they're making good money just because they're, you know, in their 70s now. And oh gosh, I used to work at Caesars and one of them had to use a, like a cane only when she was down uh, back of the house, not out on the floor. Out on the floor, you know, she would suck it up and walk around in her little dress holding her tray. But once she got back behind the scenes, whew, she was a leaning on that cane. And more power to her, I say. Good for her that they can't fire her. You know, because it's a union job. They can't fire you because you're too old or too ugly or too fat. In fact, back like about, gosh, probably 22 years ago, Caesars was trying to figure out a way to force these cocktail saurus, cocktail sori out without officially firing them because they couldn't. And so they redesigned the uniform. 
Okay, if you've ever been to Caesar's Palace, you see the waitresses wear those little white mini togas. They're so cute. Well, they redesigned the outfit for a while to this like one piece, like a bathing suit, kind of like a figure skating costume. I mean, your butt was hanging out. It left nothing to the imagination. Say what you will about the little toga. At least it's got a, some modesty with that little skirt. Well, this other thing did not. It went right up your ass. And these poor old broads just hiked it on and went about their job. You know, they weren't going to let a stupid thing like a costume ruin their day. And so the plan kind of backfired. And Caesar's had to bring back the old togas. Cocktail Saurus 1, Caesar's Palace 0. Okay, we're coming up on the other thing I wanted to show you, which is basically this giant kind of plateau. And I didn't even recognize it on my way up because it looks different than I remember it being 10 years ago when I hiked up here. Like, I feel like there was a really big tree that you could almost take shelter in, like a campsite. Maybe I was just thinking of this little grove of trees. Uh, I'm not sure. But one thing is the same, and that is this amazing viewpoint. Okay, unfortunately the viewpoint isn't as dramatic as I remembered it being either, but it's still pretty cool. I'm just gonna have to zoom in, and it is kind of a hazy day, but look at that. You can see Las Vegas in the distance from all the way up here at the top of this mountain. How about that? I told you, these mountains have some of the most pronounced prominences of any mountains in the country, I think. And that's why they call them Sky Islands, an island of life that couldn't exist at lower elevations, considering how hot and dry it is down there. Really a special kind of place. Actually, this reminds me of one last thing I wanted to mention before I end this video. Okay, I was talking about climbing around in these trees when I was working as a nude model. Well, as far as I know, it's okay to climb trees out here, just not the rain tree. You're not allowed to camp under it, you're not allowed to stand on the roots, and you're certainly not allowed to climb it. These? Uh, I don't remember reading anything saying that you shouldn't do that, and this was like 10 years ago, so please don't send me any angry emails. I don't climb trees naked anymore. Well, wait a minute. Actually, climbing a tree naked sounds like a lot of fun. Okay, I won't climb these trees naked anymore, but who's to say what kind of mischief I will get you down the road? Mm -hmm.